so 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 this uh, so uh, now let's get back to okay this is the principle so now let's get back to how one can implement uh, the zero cancelling resistor in practice so this is the first stage let me draw the full blown op amp So, this is the, uh, the master bias, right, and And uh, and this is the Miller compensating capacitor we need a resistor right and this resistor here mind you must be its resistance must be exactly equal to the transconductance of of that transistor correct so uh, so what do you have any ideas on how we can implement that one of course is to choose a resistor find a resistor and then make it equal to 1 over gm2 right but how do you uh, but then uh, you know obviously when threshold voltage changes the gm2 may change correct uh, and uh, you know this gm2 and that gm this 1 over gm2 will not track the gm2 of the transistor correct so what do you think uh, we can do this transistor i mean so remember one thing the uh, what comment can we make about uh, the uh, transconductance of uh, a transistor operating in saturation uh, and its resistance when it is operated in the triode region. What is the uh, if you take a transistor and operate it in saturation what is the uh, transconductance g m is nothing but a mu p in this case mu p c ox w by l times v s g minus v t. If the same transistor is operated in in the triode region what is the uh, uh, the uh, resistance r triode is nothing but 1 over mu p c ox w by l times v s g minus so, what is the model of the story? If you take the same size transistor, operate it in the triode region with a source gate voltage which is same as the transistor operating in saturation, then you will have the, the resistance of that uh, of the device will be the same as the transconductance of the device when operated in saturation, correct. So, therefore, what should we do? If we call this uh, 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 w by l 2 right standing for the second stage what we will do is we will take a pmos transistor here okay it does not matter which side you put the arrow because anyway the transistor is operating in triode it can be on the left side it can be on the right side so if this is vdd what is this potential uh, this basically if you assume that the overdrive of the transistor is delta v this voltage is nothing but VDD minus VTP minus delta V. 
okay and uh, so this transistor here and this transistor must have the same if you want if you want the resistance of the transistor the zero cancelling resistor to exactly track 1 by gm of that transistor in the second stage what must be i mean as per our uh, discussion just now the source gate voltage of the both the transistors must be the same but the source of this transistor is at vdd minus vtp minus delta v so what should i put its uh, how should what should be its gate potential so basically the source voltage is at vdd minus vtp minus delta v or let me just call that vsg2 so this voltage is vdd minus vsg2 so what should this voltage be vs vdd minus twice of vsg and how will you realize that uh, vdd minus twice vsg2 two diode connected devices in series so basically So, this is also going to be W by L2, W by L2, W by L2, and I go and tie this. Does it make sense? So, as you can see, you know, uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, uh, you have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 uh, uh, transistors, right? Okay. So, this is a great way of impressing your friends, right. But as you know, there is really, uh, as you can see, there is nothing really much to the whole thing, okay. And of course, if you want to look, you know, even brighter than uh, than you are, you can add CAS codes, you know, everywhere, right. Uh, and, uh, you know, which you will need anyway in practice because to get, uh, you know, high, high output resistance uh, slash good replication of current in the current mirrors and all that and you know how to make current mirrors which are very accurate by adding more and more devices. So, I mean, you know, uh, you can easily add double the number of transistors and then, you know, make the thing look or, you know, awfully uh, complicated and, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and you can impress your friends even more by simply saying looking at the picture and then, you know, uh, given uh, the first stage bias current and the value of the compensating capacitor you can just basically say what the unity gain bandwidth of the of the op amp is the op amp's unity gain bandwidth is only dependent on gm1 and and cc right okay all right so simply looking at it you can basically uh, uh, right uh, give the uh, the entire uh, the unity gain bandwidth and you know if you are a little good with numbers in your head then you know given the bias currents and you know mu and cox you can actually also do uh, uh, the phase margin you know uh, pretty much by looking at the at the picture okay and you know that the dc gain is going to be high right otherwise uh, you know nobody would have designed the op amp in the in the first place okay all right so this basically uh, uh, is uh, uh, pretty much uh, uh, the uh, uh, the culmination of what we wanted to achieve in the first place, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, kind of uh, doing a little bit of a rewind, right? Uh, uh, we started off, uh, you know, uh, uh, without assuming any background, right? Uh, uh, we started off uh, saying we want gain, and then we deduce the characteristics of the device, which will give that. Right, we figure out how to bias it, then make a whole bunch of building blocks. The basically the four, the four control sources, right? Then uh, we said uh, that uh, to bias things. I mean, uh, the the most important aspect of uh, of uh, any circuit is negative feedback. Then uh, uh, and the key point uh, uh, in realizing a good negative feedback loop is having a contraption which can subtract two voltages and and gain that difference up that led us to the differential pair correct and to get more gain we said we are going to cascade stages uh, that led us uh, to the two stage op amp 
And then we figure out that oops, this thing is going to be unstable when you close the loop. Then we figure out how to stabilize it, right? And uh, 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 and with that, uh, you know, uh, all that I wanted to say about uh, about MOS transistors and MOS uh, amplifiers is uh, is complete, right? Uh, so uh, for those of you who are uh, 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 interested uh, you know uh, you can sign up for analog ic design uh, uh, next semester where you'll go you know uh, uh, and of course we saw some fun applications of uh, uh, of transistors like you know the band gap reference and uh, uh, fixed transconductance bias circuits and uh, uh, what do you call cascode current mirrors and all this stuff right uh, but uh, in the next semester i mean in the advanced course you will basically you know, uh, kind of all this seems uh, pretty obvious when somebody explains it to you, right? Uh, when you start designing things yourself, you know, you all sorts of uh, uh, doubts will uh, uh, will start to come, right? Uh, the only way to learn design is to actually is to actually do it, right? I mean, uh, uh, just like how you cannot uh, learn swimming by watching a YouTube video, right? Okay, uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, the only way to learn design is uh, is to do it. Right, but then of course it, it doesn't make sense to, uh, you know, to take you and throw you into the deep end of a pool on day one, correct? So first you have to go to the shallow pool, like you know, kick your legs, make sure you float, make you make sure you know to breathe, and so on, and that's the equivalent of, of uh, of uh, uh, this uh, uh, this course, right? Uh, so once you, I mean, once you understand the basics, now you can build on this to uh, to uh, make more and more complicated circuits and uh, uh, and actually um, uh, use a similar of course you know uh, uh, unfortunately uh, you cannot make circuits uh, 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 make the real thing uh, but uh, the simulator is is close enough and uh, you know it gives you uh, uh, it provides a way of learning things uh, you know which you uh, cannot do uh, even with real transistors because now you can probe uh, all sorts of things and plot all sorts of things and, and enhance your understanding, right. So that is all that I had to say with uh, CMOS, right, uh, over the next, uh, or tomorrow and uh, on Friday we will, uh, uh, we will go over the same thing all over again with, with bipolar transistors, right, okay. And now the same thing does not mean that, you know, it is like saying, you know, I know how to drive, I do not know, uh, a hero Honda, now, you know, uh, 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 now, you know, I have a Yamaha bike, now, you know, should I go and learn driving all over again? Uh, the answer is, uh, is obviously no, uh, right? Uh, you know, once you know about uh, MOS transistors, it is the same old, same old, same old with bipolar stuff. This is some small, the bipolar transistor got some, uh, got some quirks, right? Uh, it's got, uh, in many ways, it's easier uh, to do the math in terms of transconductance and all that. Right. It is just that as I promised you earlier, the characteristics of the device look very similar, right, except that the math governing ID, I mean now you call the drain, you call it the collector, the gate, you call it the base and then the source, you call it the emitter, right. Then uh, the re equation relating uh, the, uh, the drain current to the gate source voltage, right, uh, is now the equation relating the collector current to the base emitter voltage. Uh, that equation will change, okay, and uh, therefore the formula for contra trans transconductance, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, will all change. But otherwise, you know, the same, uh, you know, the same principles, underlying principles, hold. So this, uh, you know, obviously it doesn't make sense for me to spend another forty hours lecturing about bipolar transistor circuits. You'll all get bored, right? So we will just, uh, you know, go through the uh, bipolar transistor stuff in. Uh, in uh, you know a couple of lectures, um, uh, where the uh, the key the uh, focus will be on highlighting the the principal differences between uh, between MOSFETs and bipolar. The bipolar transistor also has got uh, has got uh, 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 another minor difference in the sense that the base current the in the MOS transistor the gate current is zero. Uh, in the bipolar transistor, ideally it is supposed to be 0, but in practice it is what to be a small number, right, a small fraction of the collector current. So, that introduces some quirks, okay. Uh, 